One of the wonderful things about this site is the sheer abundance of fossils. When I was doing my internship, I mapped 308 ammonites on 297 nodules. So the entire top of this ridge is just littered with fossils. One of my favorite specimens on the site. We can see a female ammonite. We can see her outermost whorl, and then we can even see her living chamber. This bulbous area right here is where the ammonite would have lived. Her body would have been right down in here, and then her tentacles and her eye would be coming out in this direction. Also in this rock, we can see a baculite. A baculite is a species of ammonite, but rather than having a coiled shell, it has a long, tapered, pointy shell. Now in this particular specimen, we can see both a mold and a cast. A mold is the internal part of the baculite that's been preserved, and the cast is the impression of that baculite in the nodule. This is another one of my favorites because it shows both a female and the male and will give you a great idea of what the size difference between the two would be. The left hand side of this female is preserved. Here we can see the aperture where she would have lived with her tentacles coming out this direction. This would have been the bottom here and this would be the top of her over here. And then the male is right down here. Because of the wonderful exposures of the Pierce Shale in that particular area, provide us a unique opportunity to see a lot of these particular fossils preserved in these concretions. We have preservation of these internal molds, these stein kerns of the inside of the shell. We have occasional shell remains preserved. So we can see the inside of the shell, we can see some of the shell itself, we can see the outside preserved. And that's why using state-of-the-art documentation techniques like photogrammetry are really important because we can photogrammetrically document, we can digitally document, we can collect that 3D digital data and use that for our understanding of what these animals would be like. The 3D models created allow you to manipulate the fossils in many different ways. You can rotate them, you can spin them, you can even look at them from underneath like you inside of the rock. You can also light them up from the inside and once you have these models, you can even measure. For example, this ammonite is 60 centimeters in diameter. This model can also be sent all over the world for people in any location to study and observe the ammonites. Once you have all the information collected to do a 3D model, you can also import that data into ArcGIS. That allows you to do both elevation and contour plot drawings. So you can study the surface of the ammonite without actually having the ammonite with you.